Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here. My name is Brett Stidham, and I'm the chief of the Arlington Fire Department. Early this morning, I got a phone call that no chief ever wants to get. I was informed that one of our firefighters who was assisting Arlington PD on a welfare check had been shot. That firefighter's name is Brady Weaver. Brady works out of Station 9, and Brady's been with us here in the Arlington Fire Department for about six years. I'm incredibly relieved to report that his prognosis is currently trending in a positive direction. He is listed in critical condition, but is stable. My staff and I have had the chance to visit with Brady and his family, and, I've, and I'm reporting that he appears to be in good spirits and is alert. Brady's recovery is going to be a long one. So I continue to ask the community to pray for Brady, to pray for his family, and to also pray for our Arlington Fire family. Welfare checks are something we and the Arlington Police Department do on a regular basis. When someone in the community calls 911 with concerns that a person may be in danger or needs medical attention, it is our job to respond and make sure their issue is taken care of. That's how this particular call started. We received a, call, a 911 call at approximately 12.43 this morning from a resident at an apartment complex along Barden Green Drive. The resident reported hearing children in a neighboring apartment crying for an extended period of time and calling for their mother to wake up and open the door. Arlington police officers, Arlington firefighters, and AMR personnel all responded to the complex. I'll now turn things over to Assistant Chief McGuire from the Arlington Police Department to discuss what happened from that point and to provide an update on their ongoing investigation. Chief McGuire. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. My name is Assistant Police Chief Tarek, T-A-R-R-I-C-K, last name McGuire, M-C-G-U-I-R-E. First of all, I want to express our heartfelt sympathy and empathy uh, to the fire department. We're glad that Firefighter Weaver uh, health is improving and that he's doing okay. Before I make any comments, I also want to let you all know that this is an ongoing investigation. My goal in providing you information today is to give you updated facts that our detectives have come up with at this particular point in time. Uh, and if there is a need later, we will provide additional details uh, to the media. You heard Chief Stenham talk about the 911 call. Based on the information that officers had at the present time when they responded to the call, they believed that no weapon was present. When our officers got to the apartment, they began knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell on a small surveillance camera that was hanging on the door and announcing themselves as police. No one answered the door, but they could hear children's voices from the inside of the apartment continuing to call for their mother to wake up. The officers continued to knock at the door and ring the doorbell for approximately five more minutes. They announced themselves as police 17 times, trying to communicate that they were there to try to make sure everyone was okay. Concerned that there was someone inside who was injured, unresponsive, or in need of medical attention, the first responders made the decision to force entry into the apartment. Arlington Fire Personnel are equipped with tools that can be used to breach doors, so they began to work on the door to get inside the apartment. While they were doing that, officers continued to announce themselves 
to try to identify if someone was inside to give them assistance. A short time later, a single gunshot was fired, striking firefighter Weaver. All the first responders immediately backed away from the door, took cover, uh, and firefighter Weaver was taken away from the scene to get medical attention, and officers continued to stand by giving verbal commands for someone to come out. I think it's important to note that because EMS was on scene, uh, and they quickly were able to get to an ambulance to get the firefighter away from the scene so he could seek immediate medical attention. As our officers remained on scene, continuing to give exit commands, a man, a woman, and two children later complied with those commands and walked out of the apartment. At the time of the incident, after establishing probable cause in relations to the shooter, officers made a decision to not only detain the suspect, uh, but he was arrested. Facts that our investigators know at this particular time, that the subject was asleep inside the residence with his girlfriend, and they woke up hearing first responders trying to breach the door. Thinking that someone was trying to break in, he fired a shot and had his girlfriend call 911. We have confirmed that the girlfriend did call 911. After concluding this investigation and reviewing the facts of this case, we will discuss and staff this case with the district attorney. I want to provide a few closing comments. I again want to stress the importance that first responders and the actions that they take in our community every single day. Officers repeatedly knocked at the door, announcing themselves approximately 17 times, trying to offer and render aid to one that was possibly inside of the residence. None of our officers returned fire in this incident. Uh, no additional shots were fired, and no one else was injured other than the firefighter. On behalf of the APD family, again, I would like to extend our thoughts and our prayers and our well wishes to a safe recovery for Firefighter Weaver. And with that, I will open it up for questions. So you said you detained the man inside the Has he actually been arrested? Or again, that's mm -hmm. going to be in the hands of the DA? So when officers uh, brought him into custody, yes, he was arrested. Uh, he was charged uh, with aggravated assault. And then there were additional charges, outstanding charges, that he was wanted for. And so I want to emphasize uh, that it is important that we note this is early on in the investigation. Uh, there are several things that need to be done. Uh, we need to, number one, uh, we need to interview other witnesses. All the witnesses that are involved in this incident, uh, that will include those that are children uh, in relation to this case, so we can ensure that all details are finalized. It is our job as a police department uh, to investigate these cases and present them to the district attorney's office to make a final decision. Was CPS called on this case? Uh, no. So I, I think that it's, it's, it's kind of very important that no CPS was not called. Uh, in this particular case, if you put yourselves, in my opinion, uh, in the shoes of the officers and the first responders, uh, they're there at the door. They hear children inside. Uh, we got a phone call. Uh, a 911 phone call that there were children inside that were calling for their mother. And after quite some time, they got no answer, uh, and they wanted to ensure that those children were okay, let alone that their mother was okay. Assistant Chief, can you talk about how, according to the 911 call, how long the caller insists these children have been crying mm -hmm. and how that weighs with there not um, being any response to these crying children? Sure. So I, th I think it's also important to note uh, that we received a call, as you stated, uh, from someone that had concerns about these children uh, calling for their mother. Uh, I don't have the exact time, uh, how long that the caller uh, was, was hearing those uh, comments or hearing the children, uh, but what I can say is that uh, we immediately responded, and when we got on scene, we began to assess the situation, uh, listen to the situation, and I want to point out this situation is a little bit different than all of uh, a lot of other calls that we have, right? Uh, and what I mean by that is normally 
uh, when officers respond uh, to these type of calls where they immediately force entry. Uh, there are circumstances that would lead us to believe that maybe there's an ongoing assault inside the residence, uh, maybe there were previous gunshots inside the residence, but all the officers had to know, and the first responders at a particular time of this call, is that we heard children inside calling for their mother. And what are the approximate ages of those children? Uh, I can tell you that they're juveniles. I don't want to go directly to their actual age. When it comes to the status of how the firefighters are doing, you mentioned you went and spoke with him, or went with the family. Is he able to speak? Yes, yes, he is. Like I said, he's alert, he's speaking, he's actually eating, uh, so those are good things. But like I said before, it's going to be a long uh, recovery for Brady. And so we just ask everybody for their continued prayers and thoughts, um, you know, not only for him, but our family, fire family, because it takes a toll on all of us as first responders. Um, you know, if something happens to PD or fire, we care so much for each other. We work so closely together. It's, it's uh, you know, we are a family. And so. He's been working for six years for the city. How would right. you describe him? Uh, Brady's an awesome firefighter, my understanding. Um, he is, uh, he's funny. He's, he's, he's a character, I can tell you that. He was a character this morning when I was visiting with him. Um, and I love that about him. You know, it brings a lot of, uh, it brings something um, to the fire service or to, to Arlington Fire Department in particular that we need. We have to have that uh, spunkiness about us, and a little bit of uh, a little bit of that character goes a long way in our department. Um, you know, because it is a serious job, and and each and every time we go out on a call, we don't know what to expect, and we may not come home for those calls. We know this is a different situation, but there are fire chiefs across the country, because they are accompanying police in situations, they've decided to um, provide bulletproof vests to their firefighters. Has, does this lend to that conversation for you at all? Uh, you know, the, this, is, this is considered a welfare check, right? Um, so a lot of times we, we go out on welfare checks. Sometimes we don't find anything on welfare checks. Sometimes we run into situations. Um, we have specific calls, active shooter type calls, where we re have requirements for those vests. Uh, but other times it's officer discretion. Uh, it's at their discretion. Um, like Chief McGuire said, you know, they didn't feel like they were in any danger uh, on this situation. And so, um, they didn't choose to wear the vest. It's nothing. There's nothing against that, in my opinion. Um, these, these, the, everybody who's on scene did a fantastic job. Uh, they took a long time, like Chief said, assessing the situation uh, before choosing to to enter the the premises. And um, you know, we do have other calls where we stage with PD. You know, domestic calls. Uh, shootings, stabbings, things like that. We actually stage and wait on PD to respond and make sure the scene is, is clear. But um, a lot of times we go on these uh, welfare checks, sometimes by ourselves, sometimes with PD, a lot of times with EMS. So um, just different types of calls, uh, you've got to make different decisions. Chief, to get a little bit more specific on that, we, we expect as civilians that you firefighters are trained and prepared to go into burning buildings. How is your training different now that you know you might have to confront bullets in this world? You know, our, our training our training doesn't change. We try to prepare for every single thing that we could run into every single day. Um, you know, our, as the world changes, we try to evolve with our training. But, um, you know, typically in these situations, um, you know, again, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like they made any decision that I wouldn't have made or that I haven't made in my career. I've been doing this job 30 years and I've made a lot of decisions myself and everybody on scene did a great job of assessing the situation and uh, making, a, making a good decision and it's just a, a terrible outcome for us. This may be for Chief McGuire, I, um, if, you, if you would, back to the moment of entry, can you say how much time there was between uh, personnel entering and 
then the single gunshot um, being fired. And did any of the personnel make eye contact with anyone while inside? Yeah, so uh, I just want to just kind of reiterate some points I made earlier. Uh, after the shot was fired, uh, officers retreated. Uh, and they also retreated with emergency personnel, right, to get to get the injured firefighter away from the scene. And so they maintained their distance. Uh, they followed their training. They gave out tactical verbal commands uh, for persons to exit the apartment. Uh, the door opened, uh, and then persons began to come out, as we would call people out, uh, and, and make those decisions to detain them or take them into custody. So the shooter fired through the door? Yes. The door of the residence? Yeah, so the shooter was inside of the residence with the door closed and fired a weapon with the door closed. The, the bullet went through the door and hit the firefighter. So they never made it inside? No. Okay. Thank so, you. So just to add clarity, as the door was being breached by the firefighter with the breaching tool, the person fired the weapon, bullet goes through the door, strikes the firefighter. So right now, we're trying to finalize the details because, as you know, uh, the facts that we know as of right now, they're very unique. Uh, and so we want to ensure that uh, in the interest of justice, uh, that we are looking at every single situation, finalize those details, and then discuss it with the district attorney. Had you had any history there before? Uh, as we know right now, uh, there was no previous call history at that location. You mentioned that you guys do the welfare checks together all the time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's going to be something in the future. How do you keep something like this from happening again? Well, I think the most important thing is after each critical incident, something such as this, uh, we will go back and we will do what we call an after-action report. And during that after-action report, we look at uh, everything that happened uh, from the time that the call was dispatched right all the way to the ending action. Uh, and we will look at what recommendations, what changes should or should we not make as it relates to this particular type of call. Can you tell us in total how many officers and how many firefighters were there at the scene at that time? So it, it evolved. I think on the, on the initial response, uh, there were two officers present, uh, and then the, 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 the uh, two firefighters and two AMR persons. And so, again, they took a, they took a while. Uh, to assess what was going on and additional support uh, ultimately came to the location. Can the suspect lawfully carry gun? Does he have a criminal history where he can? Um, I, I, don't, I don't think that there's any issues with the suspect's uh, background that we care to discuss at this time, uh, but, but uh, again, it's still ongoing. Any explanation as to why a parent would not hear her children crying yeah. for such a length of time that the neighbors would call police, mm -hmm. police would have time to get there, and then you spend five minutes banging mm -hmm. at the door? Yeah. What was going on with that mother? Ma'am, I can't speak to her mindset at that particular time. It, it is concerning. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know if she was asleep or if she was oversleeping. Uh, I can't speak to that, but that's why we're trying to finalize this information. Uh, we want to hear from everyone that was inside of that residence. Uh, and so that's why I say that it's still ongoing and we're trying to verify that. She didn't need any medical attention at scene? Uh, f no. Can you share if the investigation included um, obtaining a search warrant for the apartment and the soul and what was found in the apartment, if anything? So earlier today, I don't have that information, but yes, earlier today we, we, are, we were working on a search warrant. It is normal procedure and protocol. Uh, for us to get a search warrant signed by a judge and search the apartment uh, to look for a firearm or any other type of evidence uh, that may lend credibility uh, to a criminal offense. So you haven't had an opportunity to search for drugs? Uh, I'm not sure about that time. We were working on a search warrant earlier today at some point in time. If it hasn't happened already, the search warrant will be executed. And Chief, can you tell us a little bit more about Weaver? How long has he been on the department? Is he a uh, first firefighter in his family? Whether he's the first firefighter in his family, I, I don't know, but I can tell you that Brady has been here in the Arlington Fire Department for six years. Uh, he's currently, his rank is a firefighter rank, and so um, at times, he, he was actually assigned to the squad, so our squads are two-person units that, that answer medical calls along with our AMR partners. And so that's, that's why there was two people from Arlington Fire on this call. Chief McGuire, you have a, a resident inside their residence, and they have told you they feel like
like they their home was being mm -hmm. uh, burglarized or someone was breaking mm -hmm. in. It's got to be tough to investigate. It's very difficult to investigate. Uh, like I said, this this is a very unique circumstance, uh, but but it is our job as police officers, public safety officials, as investigators to ensure all the facts are credible as we know them. Uh, and that is why it's important uh, that we take those actions, filing the search warrant, ensuring that we recover uh, any type of property or anything that is associated with the, the crime or the circumstances of the incident, uh, and then follow that normal protocol and discuss what those outcomes uh, are with the district attorney and file that case with them. One more question. Was the, um, I'm trying to think of one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was, 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 were they cooperative once they came out? Can you talk about that? Yes, we, they, they came out, uh, they surrendered to us uh, without incident. There were no other issues that we, that we are uh, available to speak on at this time, so there were no further incidents. Thank you all for coming.